So apparently there was a horror film. I guess it was a horror film, right? It was a horror film called Silent Hill. And Silent Hill was filmed here and inspired by this town. Oh, you don't know if it was filmed here. Oh, okay. It was inspired by this place. And I get it because it's creepy here. I mean, if I was here by myself, uh, I don't know how long I'd stay, to be honest with you. Alright, hey guys, it is about 3 o'clock in the morning and uh, I am on my way to Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport and uh, then I am heading to Pennsylvania. I'm on my way to security right now, hopefully it won't be that long and then I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee so we'll see you in just a minute. We're in Charlotte right now, and we're on our way to uh, Pittsburgh from Charlotte. The question is, did Franco Harris really catch it? Nobody really knows, but of course, they say he did, the refs say he did, and they won the game, and that's about it. So it doesn't matter if he caught it or not. Centralia is located about 4 hours and 20 minutes east of the city of Pittsburgh, roughly 240 miles. Centralia, Pennsylvania was once a town flourishing from the local coal mining industry. The now practically vacant town is home to just four people. In 1962, a fire was discovered burning underneath the town due to hot embers from a local garbage dump fire dropping into the coal below. In 1979, while checking the levels of his underground gas tanks, a local gas station owner discovered his gasoline had reached a temperature of 172 degrees Fahrenheit. In 1981, a 12-year-old boy, while playing with his cousin in their backyard, fell into a sinkhole which was caused by the coal mine fires. The hole was 150 feet deep. Fortunately, the boy's cousin was able to rescue him. Not long afterwards, the steam escaping from the sinkhole was tested and was found to have lethal levels of carbon monoxide. In 1992, the state of Pennsylvania condemned the town by claiming eminent domain. Anyone living in Centralia was allowed to stay until they passed away. All right, hey, we are in Centralia, Pennsylvania and uh, it was about three and a half hours from the Pittsburgh area to get here. Uh, right now we're just kind of looking for some of the uh, areas that have kind of caved in from the fires. Uh, a lot of graffiti around. Uh, you can tell that there's a lot of roads that have been closed because of the fires and um, not a whole lot of really evidence of any type of homes or you can't really see any foundations or anything it's just really a deserted area and so we're going to keep looking and uh, keep walking down uh, this deserted road and see if there's anything that we can find yeah i should have brought some spray paint yeah that's right a small town tourist was here so this place i don't know if it's just the kind of the cold you know winter here in Pennsylvania, but it kind of has an eerie feeling about it. Maybe it's the fact that there's old couches and 
just spray paint everywhere. I don't know. It's kind of got a weird feeling about this place. And of course, you know, the fire has been burning underneath this town for, well, since the 1960s. And there's a lot of different theories, maybe three different theories on how the fire got started, but the predominant belief is that the local landfill was trying to uh, burn up some of the trash and some of the burning uh, like embers from the fire went into a mine shaft and caught the coal on fire that's underneath this town and it's been burning ever since. Uh, several governors of Pennsylvania have uh, done a lot to just shut this place down because it is unsafe and uh, condemn all the buildings. Eventually, all the buildings were torn down. There was a thousand people here at one point because of the coal mines, but now it's down to four people. I imagine at one point, this was probably a beautiful place to live, I would think. It's very woodsy and kind of in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, central Pennsylvania, so I imagine it was probably a pretty cool place to live and kind of peaceful and quiet. I would love to talk to one of the local residents. I don't know if that's going to be possible, uh, but we'll see. We'll see if we run into anybody and, uh, and see if we can talk to someone local and really get an idea of the history of this town from someone who lived through it, not just what you read on the internet. So apparently there was a horror film. I guess it was a horror film, right? It was a horror film called Silent Hill. And Silent Hill was filmed here and inspired by this town. Oh, you don't know if it was filmed here. Okay. It was inspired by this place. And I get it because it's creepy here. I mean, if I was here by myself, uh, I don't know how long I'd stay, to be honest with you. But uh, fortunately, my brother's with me today and doing this, and uh, I feel a little more comfortable having somebody else here and two cell phones, you know, in case the killer gets one of us. But uh, yeah, this place is pretty wild, I'll be honest with you. It's definitely worth checking out if if you're not too far from it. Okay, so after a little bit of uh, research on the Google, uh, we believe we've located the old Highway 61 and uh, what they call Graffiti Road or Graffiti Way or whatever it is. And I think this is it. Now this is where there is supposed to be, oh my goodness, steam coming out of the ground from where the fires were. Oh, it's all covered with I wonder if they did this to try to prevent people from coming back here. Yeah, it looks like they dumped just piles and piles of landfill. It says here, Free Joe Exotic. You know, he was really counting on uh, Trump to free him. Yeah, I know. He thought he was going to get pardoned by Trump. <laughs> but that daggone Carol Baskins. Yeah, so it's too bad. It looks like uh, a lot of this has been covered up by landfill and uh, we're gonna keep walking up. We got time, so we're gonna check it out, but uh, hopefully we can find an area where the smoke or the steam is coming up from the ground. That's what we wanna see. And if not, I mean, this is pretty interesting, And uh, but it's definitely not what it used to be. It looks like they've Maybe the uh, state or the township or whoever came out and just dumped piles and piles of, of landfill to cover this up. I don't know if it's to prevent people from driving on it maybe, 
or coming back here, but uh, we'll keep we'll keep searching. We'll find out. Don't forget, guys, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. Share this around on your social media. It really, really helps me out. And as we're trying to grow the channel to at least 1,000 subscribers, uh, share it out. Click the reminder button so that uh, when we upload videos, you'll uh, get reminded, you'll get notified that there's a new video. Graffiti Road is definitely not what it used to be. There is some cool artwork though. Some cool graffiti. So we're gonna drive to the other end and walk in and see if it's any different or if it just looks like all this with all these big piles of landfill covering everything up. But we'll keep looking. Uh, our goal is to try to find uh, an area where the road is all cracked and the smoke from the fires are coming out and all that type of stuff. So we'll, uh, we're gonna keep looking, we don't give up. Looks like an old firework. Yeah, my brother had a great idea. Be really fun to get like a paintball tournament going on out here. All right, so we are now at the other end, the end closer to uh, Centralia, the town of Centralia, but it looks like it's no different. It looks like uh, there's just mounds and mounds of dirt and mud. Ugh. It's actually worse from this side. Yeah, it seems to be like they dumped more dirt on this side. This is probably the side that most people are familiar with. Looks like people uh, put graffiti on anything they can find room to put graffiti on. This old guide rail is just covered in graffiti. It's pretty kind of, kind of cool though, I gotta be honest with you. I'm fascinated by stuff like this because there's a lot of history behind towns like this and old roads, old abandoned roads, like this part of Route 61. Dirt mound after dirt mound, the whole way down this road. All right, well, we're gonna head back and maybe uh, look for some uh, foundations of some of the old homes and that type of stuff, see if there's anything we can find. Uh, but yeah, that's, this is pretty, uh, pretty wild, pretty interesting. All right, so we, uh, we spotted some old foundations in the woods off the street here. Uh, so we're gonna go down and check them out. Yeah, there they are, but we're gonna get down closer. You gotta wonder how old these homes are. Makes me wonder if anyone's ever come down here with uh, their metal detectors. clearly fallen in. It's kind of dangerous to be here. That probably recently fell with people coming in here. So you can see behind me, this was the 
original home here and uh, it's kind of cool that it's it's one of the few uh, that we've been able to find most everything else has been just demolished and just vaporized like it never existed but this house we happen to just spot off the side of the road and come down and check it out it's really cool so it's definitely worth i know that uh, that road that's covered old 61 that's covered in all the dirt and everything it's kind of covered up a lot of the history a lot of the cool artwork and stuff but uh, to see this old home and to see that road and to see uh, just the town is just gone, right? A thousand people to four people. It's definitely worth, in my opinion, coming out to see this and uh, check it out for yourself. Mm -hmm.